Hi all, thank you for coming. My name is uh, Mario Fusco, and uh, I'm here today to, for who knows me, this is not uh, my usual talk. I usually talk about, I don't know, programming, functional programming, uh, and rule engine. I'm the lead developer of Drools, the rule engine of Red Hat, uh, but I'm very happy to be in person again, and I decided to celebrate this uh, returning in person with a quite unusual talk for me. Uh, I uh, wanted to, I don't know, look back uh, into my career, uh, like 25 years of, of programming, and, and check uh, what we, we have done in the past and how we are uh, changing stuff or changing name, pretending that we are also changing the actual code, the meaning, but it's always the same thing with different name or redoing the same mistake and possibly how we can, we can avoid this, okay? So before I start, uh, um, I'm uh, uh, together with some friends organizing uh, the Boxed Days of Milano. The event will be on the 10th of September. The call for paper is open uh, till Monday, so if you are interested to submit a re-up. And uh, the tickets are open. Uh, and, uh, yeah. and if you also want to sponsor our event, please get, get in touch uh, with us. Thanks. Okay, so first, uh, before starting, a, a, a small disclaimer, this talk is not about uh, methodology, it's not about uh, Agile, Scrum, your poker planning, and uh, all the things you invented to pretend uh, you are working instead of doing actual code. Okay, it's not about this. That's because I have ethical principles, and therefore uh, I don't like to shoot on the Red Cross. Okay, just because of this. Okay, so let's uh, start uh, uh, with uh, my first moment in, in my career when I found that we were reinventing the wheel in some way, okay? Um, as you probably know, in the don't know, mid-70s to early 80s, uh, we had this uh, 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 database war in uh, the software uh, uh, engineering, uh, the hierarchical one uh, versus uh, the relational one. Uh, everybody knows how this ended up, and uh, the main implementers of a relational database probably was Oracle already at time, and uh, uh, another company called uh, Software AG had uh, a, a hierarchical uh, database at time, um, um, which, of course, lose this, this war, okay? But what happened then? then? In, in the early 2000s, I worked for Software AG for just a few months in 2001. Uh, we had this, uh, we had this um, uh, uh, return of, of, of the, the, the XML, okay? XML in the early 2000s was literally everywhere. So they think, okay, we have a hierarchical database, XML is a hierarchical thing, let's reinvent, rewrap our hierarchical database and let's say reinvent the way the wheel around it and create a XML database around something that it's a 20 years old technology and for many reasons uh, didn't work w that well at time and you can imagine how this thing ended up. So. Uh, I, I'm mentioning this thing because it was my first time in my career where I met a, a rebrand of something when, when they were reinventing the wheel, the, the wheel they were uh, uh, wrapping something old with a different name, with a, a different clothes, let's say, uh, uh, and, and pretend to create something new. Okay? And... Uh, I see a lot of recurring trends due in, 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 uh, in our job in uh, software engineering, in how we design architecture. And uh, I wanted to go through them, and I'm sure I'm missing something. Uh, this is just my experience, but probably uh, you have different experience. And by the way, if you have uh, other examples uh, uh, of, of, of these patterns, please let me know so I could then reach uh, this talk. Okay, uh, one thing that I y usually see is that we have lots of unnecessary complexity, okay? This diagram is out to tell uh, uh, um, a pound, uh, um, sorry, um, 
um, the weight of a person in UK. So you, you need to figure out if you want to use pounds or, or you want to use uh, uh, um, uh, kilograms or, or stones, I guess, I guess is the name or whatever crazy stuff they have. And these have this very complex thing to decide how to tell weights and how to tell other measures in UK, okay? So of course, this is a sort of joke, but this is to say that we have lots of unnecessary complexity everywhere, uh, but uh, we don't have to. Sometimes there is something that is uh, simple, straightforward, okay? And, uh, and uh, of course, uh, you, you can go even further. You can make it even more simple, right? Uh, so, yeah, sometimes uh, we have lots of unnecessary complexity uh, and we try to simplify. And uh, this is a, a very recurrent pattern in our, in our uh, uh, industry, I think. I mean, in the other way, uh, in, the, in the bad way, we sometimes try to simplify. This, we don't need this thing, we don't need this thing. We simplify and behind the, the, the reasonable, okay? And uh, I saw, for instance, this pattern while we are going from XML to JSON to YAML. And uh, I like a lot this tweet from uh, Bruno Borges that uh, tried to uh, uh, list the things that he likes and he doesn't like of this, this format, okay? And, and the problem is that, yeah, XML to me is just great. I can add comment, I can uh, validate it, it works uh, great uh, with IDE. Uh, it just works, okay? There was really no need for, I don't know, JSON or even worse, YAML now. YAML is a nightmare to me. I don't know if you have some similar experience, but uh, I found uh, a few tweets of, of friends and colleagues that uh, are not happy with YAML as well. When, but why we, we have this craziness? Because we had the markup language and then we tried to, do, to simplify it, removing stuff that was not necessary, but in reality it was. And then uh, we simplified uh, uh, beyond the reasonable again. And we, end up, we ended up so, with something that is not usable at all. And we are building our cloud infrastructure uh, how, uh, on this thing now, which is pretty crazy if you think about it. Okay, and then, yeah, we, we make uh, lots of uh, uh, weird assumptions, okay? And, and uh, when we push this to the limit, things go horribly wrong, okay? Because now in YAML we have this assumption that no means false. So if you try to encode Norway, it will end up with a false, which is a totally stupid thing if you think about it, okay? It w they made an assumption and, and uh, f f just probably for the sake of saving a few characters or to give something more readable, but uh, it, 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 it breaks a lot, okay? Taking shortcut in this way breaks a lot. And uh, yeah. I like this quote from, from Albert Einstein, everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. And I see this trend in our industry. We try to make things uh, uh, simpler than they, they should be, okay? So yeah, it's true that Leonardo da Vinci said that simplicity is the ultimate sophistication, but I believe that oversimplification is the ultimate idiocy, yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, of course, if you know me, you know what I think about uh, static and uh, dynamic, uh, dynamically typed language, okay? Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think that uh, since we want to simplify, we want to remove complexity, then uh, guess what? We decided at some point that we don't need a type system at all, then we remove it, okay? And this is probably the best definition that I found on the internet about what dynamic typing is, okay? It's the belief that you can't explain to a computer why your code works, but you can keep track of all of it in your head. That's just crazy. Or this is my definition, dynamic typing is the best way to discover that a duck cannot bark, yes, in production and on a Friday evening. And yeah, 
And why we are doing so? Because, yeah, at some point we decided that uh, we want to have static typing that was hard to, 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 to use it. And, uh, yeah, let's remove it, let's simplify it, let's make everything dynamic, and then let's have everything a mess. Okay, and uh, I, I see this, this, this pattern also in other situations. So uh, you probably all know the fallacies of distributed computing. If, if you think about it, all the stuff that are listed is, here is pretty obvious. But at some point, we decided to simplify things, deciding that uh, a remote call should look exactly as a local call. And uh, we build the software layers of software on top of, of this assumption. And of course, things can go terribly wrong if you simplify things that way, because uh, you are missing all, all this problem. So the message is don't try to oversimplify beyond the reasonable again. Okay? And then we have, OK, it is no code, low code, meet. Uh, we, want to, we don't want to code at all. We want to say in some way to to, to our computer what we want to do. So at some point, we will, we will not need code anymore. And uh, about this, I, I found this fantastic uh, 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 image of, of the co commit script guy. Yes, yeah, so you know what? Uh, in the future, we will not uh, need to, to write code anymore. Um, we, uh, we, we will just stay in a formal way to the computer what we want, and the computer will, we will generate the, the code for us. Okay, and so do you know what is the formal way to tell uh, to a computer what we want? Code, okay? That's all. So you need code in some way or another. And yes, we have intelligent system, and what they do is that they change randomly something in our code that tells uh, till uh, uh, something happens, and uh, some, from time to time I do it in my code, and I, I know it's, it's sloppy and it's hacky, it's a bad coding practice, and I feel bad when I do it, and uh, at the end of my working day like this, I need to, uh, to have a shower to, to clean myself from, from this dirty job that I did. But in reality, if you use machine learning, machine learning do this so fast enough that now at that point it's cool, you are not code anymore, and you get uh, four times your salary for doing this. Right? This is right code. This is good code, right? And uh, yes, machine learning is uh, it's cool. It's the things that suggest you that you uh, uh, you are, buy, you are trying to buy, for instance, a washing machine that it sees that uh, it's uh, strongly statistically related with soap, so it uh, suggests you to, to buy laundry detergent sometimes. But some other times it says, OK, this washing machine is related uh, statistically with this other and this other. So it suggests me to bring three washing machines together. So the, the machine learning it decided that, yeah, I'm buying a washing machine. Uh, probably I decided to start up a whole new laundry. OK? Yeah, and th this is happens very, very frequently. And why, it, why does this happen? For a, a, a very simple reason, in my opinion, okay, machine learning is great. We find statistical correlation and discover new pattern, discover new things that probably, as a human, we don't see. But when we can complement it for, with symbolic reasoning, with a rule engine, okay, with a rule engine, we can say, okay, look, it's very unlikely that a, a, a man, a guy who, who is buying a washing machine will probably may want to buy other two, okay? And uh, this is also artificial intelligence. We uh, uh, mistakenly um, use as a synonym of machine learning and artificial intelligence. It's not like that. Marchi mar uh, machine learning is just a subset of artificial intelligence. And if you think about it, your uh, business domain, domain uh, uh, knowledge Lives in the, in the, for instance, in this example, in the rule that uh, you write with a rule engine if you want to use one. Okay? And uh, if you don't, what, you, what are you doing? Think about it. You are throwing away the knowledge of your business. As a human, you are 
which can be something very uh, specific or very complicated or very, uh, um, again, yes, yeah, specific or your business, but something also very uh, trivial, like the fact that uh, very likely you don't want to buy three washing machines. Okay? And uh, you are throwing all this knowledge away and hoping that the, the, the machine learning, the, the statistical correlation will rediscover this for you. There's no reason for doing this. Okay, so the other message is, is uh, okay, yeah, we have old way to do stuff, new way to do stuff, they are great, but uh, from time to time, instead of, of asking yourself, should I use the old way, should I throw everything away and start from scratch with the new way, probably the good question is, uh, how can I combine the two and take the best of the two worlds? Okay, so again, when we reinvented the, the wheel, we not only reinvented the wheel from time to time, we throw everything away, restart from scratch, and we throw away 20 or 30 years of knowledge for doing something totally new, sometimes for good reason, many other times without a valid reason. Okay, and then there is this other a uh, very common pattern, in my opinion. I call this the pendulum of innovation. We, like a pendulum, uh, uh, oscillates between these two states, of th th this, this pair of states. We go from Fed to thin clients and back, from centralized to distributed system and back, and, 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 and about the, our organization, we, for instance, go uh, 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 we went we all in with outsourcing, and now we understood that outsourcing is not the way to go. We are going back to insourcing everything again. And this is very typical with the uh, fat and thin client uh, uh, pattern, right? We started with, with the mainframe, so everything on the uh, server side and a very thin client. And then we decided, okay, no, the client has to do something, let's move this on the desktop, so this is an innovation. Then we had another innovation, and we decided to do server-side web apps, and we had another innovation, and we br br brought this everything back again on the client using Java applets, and then we had another innovation that bring everything back on the server with server-side HTML, HTML uh, rendering, and then we decided that, no, it's better on the client, let's do with micro front end. So we are doing back and forth, back and forward uh, lots of times. And yeah, probably these things mean that we still haven't understood what's the right thing to do here, but uh, we are trying hard, yeah. Uh, and uh, there are other forms of, of, of this pattern. Uh, in, in, in different way, uh, I, I think there are s s some, some, more often it's, it's a, a pendulum thing, like I said. Sometimes you, you go in circles on, on a spiral in this case, and think about, for instance, for what's happening uh, with the concurrent programming in Java. So with Java 1.0, we had green threads, which were, uh, um, the virtual thread, okay, a thread that the, 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 uh, uh, the native thread was mapped on many green threads. And then uh, we, they performed horribly at time. I'm speaking about like 25 years ago or 26. Uh, and then, okay, green thread doesn't work. Let's go with native thread. But native thread are uh, 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 difficult to synchronize and, uh, and, uh, and uh, to, to, to clip a clear state among them. So we decided to use uh, events, so actors and message passage, passing. And then we also found that uh, native threads are a scarce resource, so we decided to go with reactive programming. And then we did the full circle, and now with Project Loom, we are going back again to virtual threads, okay? So yeah, I'm not saying this is bad, but uh, we do this circle and, and sometime we return back to the starting point. And then, of course, another thing that is uh, really, really common and probably you could give me some examples about this is rebranding. There is a, an old idea which 
well, it's not, uh, it, it didn't have success for, uh, for any reason, okay? It, it probably was a, a bad idea completely, but it was, n or it was not so good received, received I don't know. But then uh, the thing we do is that, uh, yeah, let's call it, let's change it, the name and, and everything will be fine, right? Uh, I don't know, the, the first example that uh, comes to my mind is, is uh, uh, Microsoft browser, for instance. You, everybody knows Internet Explorer, it's, it was a man, a nightmare. Uh, okay, what we do, people late in, uh, uh, Internet Explorer, okay, let's change the name. Now, let's call it Edge, do, job done. It's a new thing, okay? And uh, we have a lot of this example in our, in our industry. Uh, and yes, uh, by the way, at, at this point you have realized so far that uh, this talk is just uh, the rent of uh, uh, almost 50 years old uh, programmer that uh, has seen lots of stuff in his working life uh, and, and try to uh, connect the dot. And uh, yeah, I love this cloud uh, craziness thing. Uh, now we everything is cloud and cloud native and whatever. But uh, yeah, I, I, I miss to see this huge difference between the cloud computer and, and, and the mind frame that we had 50 years ago, right? So, yeah, I, I, I'm that old, the old man yelling at, at the cloud, but uh, uh, yeah, this is my point of view, to be honest. And yeah, I, I found, for instance, this uh, uh, um, document on a random uh, serv uh, uh, vendor of, of serverless stuff, so you can do microservices, you can do a ping backend, and you can do data processing, you can do all this stuff, but if you really read all this stuff and what you can do, and you really are, and then you really wonder, okay, what this, why this stuff is different from a mainframe? And you can actually find articles like this around in the web, yes. Is serverless than you mainframe? Well, of course, I, 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 I'm not speaking about a lot of stuff here, the, the, scale, the scaling uh, stuff that uh, uh, it's one of the main features and the one you want to save money. Of course, yes, there is lots of innovation. Clearly, I'm not saying that there is no innovation. But uh, uh, we bring this with too many emphasis and uh, yeah, I just wanted again to connect the, the dot from a, a, a 10,000 meter uh, uh, point of view and say that, yeah, we are innovating, but not that so much as we pretend to be. Okay, so don't try to set up a server. There's no server really uh, uh, realize the truth. Okay. Uh, and then we do, we do this also with other stuff. We keep reinventing, rebranding, for instance, uh, the remote calls, the inter-process communication. So we had uh, RPC, we had Corpus, Opress, and now it's JRPC. Okay, there are lots of reasons for doing all this stuff there, but we are reinventing the wheel again and again and again in different ways. Okay, and I saw also this uh, same uh, thing uh, with, with another hot topic, let's say, which is modularization. It was an hot topic on the code side uh, up to the introduction of the model system in Java, up to the J JPMS. So we, did this, we tried to do this modular modularization thing in Java, uh, first by introducing package, but then packages was not really encapsulated uh, enough and you, it doesn't prevent you to write uh, spaghetti code. And then uh, we had uh, this OSJ thing which was, which was also to dynamically uh, load the module, not, also, not only to, to, to separate them, but uh, I don't know if you worked with OSGI. To me, it's a, a really nightmare and uh, um, and yeah, every time I have a, 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 an OSGI related uh, error uh, uh, in my email in the morning, uh, I know it will be a bad day. Uh, and, 
And then, okay, we, we decided to, to, to reinvent this again with JPMS uh, in Java 9, the module system, it's, it's cool, it's nice. Uh, we introduced this thing, I think, like seven years ago. How many of you are using JPMS, really? Okay, so, yeah. Uh, enough. Uh, and, 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 of course, on the architectural side, we did exactly the same with uh, distributed computer, uh, with, uh, with SOA, and uh, now with SOA, everything is a microservice, and uh, uh, I have this small two-lines method. Uh, it's self-sufficient. I put it in the microservice, and... I have another method, okay, let's try, let's put this on a different method in a different microservice, and guess what, everything then is slow when, when one thing calls the other. Who knows why, yeah, I'm, I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm saying yes, we, again, is, there is this pendulum of innovation even there, if you think about it. We went to uh, um, monolith, the extreme monolith, the big ball of mud of monolith, and then we went on the oppo extreme opposite. I, I'm seeing microservices that doesn't make any sense. I mean, re really, a uh, 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 one single short method is a microservice per se. Does, does it make sense? I mean, let's try to find the good balance. I know it's hard, uh, but we are not uh, uh, doing it very well for s so far, I guess. Okay, so just to just to recap, the the, the 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 software engineering and architecture innovation patterns that I see that I saw in my career so far is that uh, yes, we simplification is a good thing. Okay, uh, rem, when when you remove incidental complexity, when you oversimplify, you are. Uh, uh, moving uh, uh, under the carpet some important details, okay? And, and, and if you pretend to forget them at some point, they will bite, bite you back. So this is a, 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 a recurrent trend that I see quite often. Uh, and then I, I talk about of the other trends that I see, which are, which are these... Uh, trying to reduce stuff in different way uh, and going back and forward. Again, I, I provided you some example, but I'm sure you have some other example in mind. Please get in touch if this is the case. But we keep doing this stuff, trying hard to, to change, and, and then going back to the starting point at some point. Okay? And then, of course, yeah, we, we have this rebranding thing. We... Uh, fix stuff by change, changing their names. W that is just crazy. Okay, and uh, you can do, can we do something about this? Uh, well, the problem is that yeah, we live in this industry, and for some reason, this industry is made of a lot of uh, is built up on, on hype. We uh, everybody follow the hype, and. Uh, I don't know why there is, there is so much uh, cargo cult uh, uh, reasoning way of thinking in our in our uh, job. We should uh, uh, try to 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 be beware of this. Uh, we should try to beware of stretched narratives and analogies. I really dislike the, for some reason people fall in love with this picture uh, the first time they saw it, and you think about it, it doesn't make any sense, okay? It doesn't make literally any sense. So tell me when you wanted to buy a car, but then you went to the uh, uh, car dealer, and the car dealer told you, listen, I don't have a car for you now. We'll start with a skate, and then I will give you a bicycle in two months, and then come back, I will give you a motorcycle, and then come back, I will finally give you the car. This is, is, is this what happens in real life? I don't know. I mean, okay. And, and, and by the way, this is exactly the same thing that happens in software, but doesn't work. I remember 
uh, when I worked in, in Lugano with, with some of, of the gentlemen here, we started doing a, a, a documental system that was intended to yeah, uh, uh, index the document internal to, uh, to, 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 our, uh, to our company and, and to only for a limited uh, set of customers. Uh, we started small, it was a small project, and then uh, 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 at some point uh, our CEO had uh, the illumination that that thing could be, uh, uh, that same thing could become a um, social network for uh, sharing documents among people in the world. So we, we went from 10 users and he wanted to, to, to go to 10 million users with the same software and the same architecture, we, which is just crazy. I mean, it's, it's exactly the same thing. You are using a, a skateboard and then you want to go to, on the freeway. It doesn't work like this. If you want to, to do this, you have to design it up front for that target. Otherwise, uh, you, you keep adding uh, uh, adjustment here and there, and, and doing compromise, and you know what's the what is the the, the, the final thing? It's just a big ball of unmaintainable mud. Okay, and uh, this is another very typical thing that I have seen. I have seen so many many times in my career. Uh, how many of you have written uh, their uh, ORM uh, framework? Okay, I don't like it by Bernetta. I know can do better than I Bernetta, then I will write my ORM framework. Uh, pff, yeah, doesn't make any sense as well. So be uh, beware of the not invented year syndrome. And uh, this is what I was saying before. I bought the, 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 the cargo call, the try to think with your head, try to try to find correlation between, between uh, things. Okay, uh, ask yourself, uh, where have you seen this before? If you have a strange sense of deja vu, probably you are under a, a, a rebranding effect in some way. Some, somebody trying to sell you something that you have seen before 10 years ago. And probably you know that that thing didn't work 10 years ago. So ask yourself, okay, that, this thing didn't work 10 years ago. Why am I trying to redo exactly the same thing now? What changes? Probably something changes, something meaningful changes in the context, but probably not. So why are you doing this again? Okay. And uh, yeah, that's all. Sorry, I told you this was really uh, a rant of uh, an old programmer, but I hope you enjoyed it. I, it. It was not really technical, but uh, I just want you uh, to suggest you to, to do the same exercise with your career path, to try to connect the dot and try to figure out if you have this, seen this same pattern in, uh, in, uh, in your career. And, Again, please uh, stay in touch. Thanks. Uh, I'm really curious if there are questions about this, or if there is no, or, or also if there is anybody who wants to provide uh, their own feedback uh, with, 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 with uh, your experience. mentioned uh, designing the architecture up front to, it, uh, to be correct. What do you think about evolving your architecture? Because uh, you can't always uh, big a uh, build a huge system. Sometimes you have to start out with a small Yeah, uh, 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 of course, uh, uh, the software is made uh, to, to, to evolve, to change. Uh, uh, requirements change, uh, the context change, uh, uh, but uh, Often I see this as also uh, uh, a justification of the fact that in this moment you have absolutely no clue of what you want to do, what you want to achieve, but uh, uh, your customer asked you, okay, write some code. So you start writing some code, some code but you, the, the, the goal is not clear uh, or the goal change uh, day by day. Uh, and. Uh, you you really have no clue of, 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 of what will be the final target. So you start doing something, you start uh, 
creating this architecture, uh, trying to make it evolve, uh, and, and that so f you can up to a some point, but if the end goal is very far from what you had in mind when you started, it's really hard that uh, you will get it right, okay? So my idea is that, okay, yes, of course, we are all agile, right? We are all agile. Uh, so we want evolving uh, uh, requirements, uh, but also we need a clear goal in mind from day one. Okay, we want we need to know if our system is designed for ten people or for ten millions people because I'm pretty sure that uh, you will not take the same. Uh, architectural decision, and I'm pretty sure that if you start with with uh, something that is designed for ten pe for for ten people, you cannot change it to make it work f for ten thousand or ten million. So you just throw it away here and start from scratch. Okay, uh, if you want to. Uh, take me offline. I'm around today and I'm very happy to talk with everybody. So again, let's stay in touch. Thanks.